cool. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Moore, as we do every Tuesday, Thursday, folks. And don't forget, you can reach Tim every trading day at odd-oracle.com. That's odd-oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? All right. I sent you over some charts. And actually, this is uh, uh, we need to look at the bigger picture and show exactly where we are okay. in the market. So uh, if we can, we start with chart one. Yes, I got chart one up now right now. Yes, I do. All right. Okay. The, and the bottom window is, is the... Um, SPX VIX ratio. Yes. And when uh, S and P's make higher highs, and this ratio makes lower highs, that's a bearish divergence. And going back to uh, October of 2021, or uh, anyhow, the beginning of or the end of 2021, you had that divergence, and that's about oh, first third of the chart. Anyhow, right. I put it in pink. So the SPs were hitting higher highs, and that ratio was hitting lower highs. And that was a bearish divergence on a monthly time frame. So that predicted a pullback in the market, which had happened. And the market went down uh, you know, over the next, went into the October low of 2022. Yes. So now we're over into the current time frame. And I uh, put that in blue, light blue. Right. And the ratio is uh, making higher highs along with the S&P's making higher highs. So there's no negative divergence here at all. So right. what that implies, there's a good chance this rally is probably going to continue. But what I really want to talk about is that dotted line across the top there where I have neckline. Okay, I see it. Yes, I do. Yep. Yeah, see, I think this whole thing is a head and shoulders bottom where the October 2022 low is ahead. The right shoulder uh, we finished uh, started off well, to be the October low, I guess, somewhere in there. Though in November, we had a rally. And right now, in, no in December, this is a monthly chart. Yes. We're breaking that neckline of a head and shoulders bottom. And so what needs to happen when you break a neckline or any resistance area, you need a sign of strength through it. Yes. So so what has to happen in, de what has to happen in December since we're breaking through that neckline, we have to have a sign of strength to confirm the head and shoulders bottom. Okay. So even though December, you know, is a little bit over halfway done, we need continued strength in volume and price to push through uh, this neckline, which is around 4,600 area. So in other words, if for, for some reason we just stop here yeah. and volume drops off over the next two weeks, we won't have a sign of strength through that neckline. Yeah. No, right. this is going to be cool, Tim, because, I mean, we've gone up so high, it seems like it would be hard to get a sign of strength. But we know that, listen, man, <laughs> you know, uh, when I looked at the uh, the spies, Tim, and the, the Qs on a weekly basis, they took they blew away their B points with volume. They looked to me like their big ABC structures up. So this is going to yeah. get interesting, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyhow, so this rally, what's going on right now, should not quit. And the volume should be as steady. If you know, the volume has to be at least equal to the previous uh, touching points. Okay. And so the volume, well, at least, is going to have to be at least what November was. I'll put it that way. Okay. So uh, to, to really have a, a sign of strength. Now, if we do get a sign of strength, which probably we will, you know, this head and shoulders bottom has an upside target of fifty seven hundred. Wow. And I forgot what that was. It's like twenty twenty some percent higher than right. where we are in this vicinity anyhow. So it's another, so you break 4,600, it's another 1,100 points higher than the, where the neckline is. So that, that predicts next year, you know, election year, could be an, uh, up year. There's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts. Oh, no, I'm but, with it. I uh, get it. I get it. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, so, it. so anyhow, so it looks interesting. So, so, so let's, you know, so what's the sign of strength? So that's what I was touch on next. Okay. And uh, uh, chart two, I got it. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit messy, but I'll try to explain it. But the bottom window is the advancing issues compared to declining issues. Okay. And normally, uh, the red lines show when there's two to one to the downside. Now, there's twice as many um, declining issues as advancing issues, and that usually comes at climatic lows. Yes. Because when everything's blowing out, that's usually a good opportunity to get long. And all those red dotted lines across the, the chart there, or times when the uh, two to one advanced decline was to the downside. Okay, and that's actually a uh, a five day average. 
So it's not like one day, right. it's a five-day average. So you got five days of market blowing out to the downside. If you notice, they all come at pretty close to the lows all the way across here. This yes, chart goes they do. Back, Amazing, uh, right? 2020. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, there's different ways to identify selling climaxes, and this is a pretty good way. I have other ways, too, but you want the market to, to really blow out to the downside. The bigger the blowout, the more opportunity is to the upside. Right. So anyhow, my point is this chart. So you get the red lines down to the to the downside, and what you need at bottoms is a sign of weakness to a sign of strength. And there's all different time frames you can go on. You can go on a weekly time frame. You can go on a daily time frame. You can go on a, a monthly time frame. And we're going to look at all those time frames going forward nice. over the next couple of charts here. Okay. But this is kind of a daily chart. Okay. So anyhow, my point is. You get a selling climax, and the blue line's a buying climax. And a blue and climax is a five-day average when the up advanced decline is three to one I to the upside. Oh, interesting. So, so you, you do two, two to, to one. one. to the downside five-day average, and you get a three to one to the upside. Wow. And that's when bottoms are starting to form. Okay. And, okay. And if you notice... Uh, back in uh, mid 2022, you see all the red lines, and you start seeing blue signs, uh, blue lines right after it. Yes. Well, they all they all kind of happened around that you know 350, 380, 400 area. That, yep. So the market was building a base in that time. We had a selling climax, flip back to a buying climax, all kind of in the same price range. Well, over the uh, since uh, November here. We had a selling climax going into the October 27th low. And like three days, four days, or actually what, five days later, you, you get a buying climax type thing. Right. And you get another one. And we just got it one. We're in one right now as we're talking. Right. This is today's uh, chart. Now, so. now, here, we're going to take a quick break, but I just want to go over this quickly if we get. So this is pretty cool. So on the average and the way down, Tim, right? You're talking about a two to one on a five day average, right? Right. Down. Yep. And on yep. the sign of strength, you're talking about a three to one, right? On the way up. Yeah, three to one. Five oh, day that's average. cool, man. I got it. Stay right there. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. He's going to walk through us through the rest of these charts and the rest of these ratios. Dow's up 190, Nasdaq's up 80, SP's up 21. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up 213. Nasdaq's up 81. S&Ps are up 23. We're going through the markets with Tim. We're going through his ratios with Tim. Yeah, this is pretty wild, Tim. You know, I, I was saying I had Basil on just a little bit earlier, Tim, and I'm, and I'm saying, man, this feels like a a 94 to 96 to 98 market, man. <laughs> it's just... it, yeah, it, it, it could be real interesting. And, you know, you had sentiment most of the year pretty pretty drizzle. But, but anyhow, you, you're getting it. But see, what, what I'm trying to point out, if you go back to chart one again, if you can put Okay, yep, I, I'll, there's chart one. Okay, go ahead. Yep. All right, so anyhow, so let's get back to December. We, you know, we're at the neckline. We're going through the neckline right now. We have to have a sign of strength. Right. And you put the chart two, that's yep. exactly what's happening here okay. in November. You got, you know, over the last, uh, you know, month, month and a half, you got five-day average of uh, three to one to the upside over, over, you know, actually we're talking right now, we're having, so I'm thinking this is going to continue over the next two weeks. Not every day is going to be an update. Right. But it, the sign of strength is coming exactly where it's supposed to come, right through that neckline. Yes. And that's my point I'm trying to, to make here. No, you're making a great um, point. And, you know, Tim, let me ask you something, right? You know, we know that when the ABC structures, you know, the A to B and, you know, like to be a straight line move, you know, the C to D does. I mean, that's what we're kind of looking at here, right? I mean, because, it, it, no, that's my question. Is it is it almost a straight line move? Yeah. Yeah. What, oh, you mean an ABC or, or what? Well, or, it, just in general. I mean, because what, what seems to happen here, I mean, you know, yeah, I'm long, but I, I'm having a hard time even comprehending it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, we already went up so much, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like... You know, when these yeah, things this move... Is, this is, you're right. You know, uh, these times don't come every, you right. know, even every year. No, you know? no. So, yeah, right. But when they, when they come, you got to really, you know, I guess, because I got out of the market here uh, back at that consolidation in uh, early December, late November. Yep. And uh, in that little consolidation there, I got out. And I had a couple of indicators flip the buy signals 
on that big day down in first part of December. I should have got along there. Well, I never got along until last Friday because uh, I started looking at all these charts. You know, what am I missing here? Well, I'm missing that we're, we're passing through the neckline, and the sinus strength should last all month because that monthly chart needs to have a sinus strength. I, yep, uh, I, I get right. We're just saying that. Right, so, right. And we're also uh, getting into the Christmas rally. Uh, that, I, listen, I, I heard they uh, had... They had the, the, the son of Hirsch on Bloomberg today, and he was talking about the, the Santa Claus rally, folks, okay, it's the last five days of the year and the first two days of, he was explaining that the first two days of January. Yeah, I know, pretty cool, man. Okay. Right. So, so anyhow, you can, uh, the third chart's kind of a repeat. Okay. Actually, let's flip to the chart four. Okay. I'll take a chart four okay, up. Now, Right. So we kind of looked at the dailies, you know, and, and, you know, two to one to the downside five day average and three to one to the upside on five day average. You know, we got them all over the place over the last month and a half. So this is the, um, uh, I think the, uh, this is summation index. So this, this is like a big, um, you know, to get signals from this thing, it takes a minimum of two months to get a signal. Yes. And anyhow, the, the summation index. Is um, Colin Osler added together? Well, anyhow, in a, um, I'm trying to give you a definition, but you know, Google it, put it that way. No, but, no, for sure. Anyhow, yeah. Summation index, a selling climax is a reading below minus 700. And on October 27th, 2023, we had 813, minus 813. So that was a selling climax. So two months from that date, we talked about this last week also. Yes. Two months from that date, which will be December twenty seventh, two thousand twenty three. That's a, about a, less than a week away. Okay. If we get to plus one thousand, yeah, uh, and it could be a couple of days after. Sure. You know the rules are. You know, it could be quicker than that. It could be, you know, if you get out five months, that's way too long. But yeah, you know, I see them two and a half months. But yeah, you know, if we get to two uh, on this run up on the current rally, run up, if we get to plus one thousand on the summation index. That would bode well for the next year, right? That and where where are we now? We'll I'm probably just, head and shoulders bottom. Where are we right um, now? But as of as of yesterday's close, we're seven hundred seventy four. Okay, so is that, it's going quickly, man. Oh. Over the next uh, you know week week and a half. Or That's or going week, pretty whatever. quick, man. Because the last time that you were on, which was last Thursday, I think it was only just over seven hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah, I forgot what it was, but but anyhow, this chart goes back to 2007, and the blue lines are the selling climaxes, yeah, and the red lines are the buying climaxes. If you notice, they all came at, you know, major lows. Oh yeah, you know, so this, uh, so we had one here last year, 2000, well, beginning uh, end of last year, beginning of this year, and now we're, we may get another one. So you know, two and. In a you know one year period is kind of unusual because normally these are all spread out several years apart. Right. But they all came at major lows, so this next rally uh, could be better than the last rally from you know the October 2022 low. So it seems like it's pretty good, but you know the next year could be really good, and be you know it it could be another twenty a twenty percent year <laughs> or that, thereabouts. That'll blow some so, minds, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's so you know, it's back to back, you know, twenty percent compounded. Wow! So I, I thought that was pretty, you know, pretty good. And, and so far, sentiment wise, nobody's really saying anything about it. I kind of put my stuff out there, and people are kind of like, you know, poo pooing me. I'm thinking, nah, we're you know, the fundamentals don't don't support it. You know, screw that. You know, I think the technicals do. So well, they you we'll know see. the the bottom line is is that you know if these rates keep going down, the fundamentals are going to support quite a bit, man. Because you know this the last you know two years, man. The bottom line is that you've had you know rates that are really high, and we know if rates go low, and all of these big companies have to do is refinance. You know everything's out on their balance sheet, man. I mean. That's how it works, and then and it's off to the races again, you know. So yeah, it's off to the races. So it's it could be uh, pretty good here. So we got time to go over uh, yes. another chart here. Yep, I'm ready. Go ahead. All right, uh, let's go to chart five. Okay. And this is kind of just a repeat. We got a buy signal on October twenty eighth, two thousand twenty three. Matter of fact, I had 
a bunch of different type bicycles from different methods all the way from July to October of this year. Yes. All in that vicinity of that bottom. But and we're talking the GDX one. right now, and folks. So we're talking kind of yeah, that's, it, you know, that's a bicycle and and so if that bicycle and this this bicycle the reason why I went to present it because normally when it, it triggers they they usually lead about six months rallies. So this would imply this this signal signal that came on August twenty eighth would rally into February. So now if that's true, let's go to chart number six. Okay. And this is momentum chart. This is a monthly chart. Yeah. And these signals don't happen very often. Last time we gave a signal was in January 2021, and it was a sell signal. And this chart measures the uh, advanced decline and up-down volume for GDX. Wow. So it is, everything's geared towards the GDX. Um, um, yes. Uh, yeah, you, you got a break coming up here, so I can wait. Yeah, awesome. Just stay right there, folks, okay? And the last two charts we've been going over, folks, is the GDX and the gold market. Stay right there. Tim Ward and myself are going to be coming back. Now, don't forget, you can uh, get Tim's newsletter by going over to Ord, R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Hoyt, Tom O'Brien. We, uh, we're discussing right now the GDX. Go ahead, Tim. All right, GDX. You know, the, the chart number six is the uh, monthly GDX, and the bottom window is the monthly cumulative up-down volume for GDX. Uh, second window up from the bottom is a monthly cumulative GDX advanced decline. Okay. So you got the volume, and you got the advanced decline. So you got all the statistics. A GDX, and this is this is a momentum chart. So it doesn't like whip up, whip down. You know, you get one week of sell. This this is you know what these signals. Uh, you know, you got a sell signal back in 2012, and that stayed on a sell signal all the way to 2016. That's heavy. Yeah, so, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. So the momentum of the advanced decline and up down volume were down for four years in a row. Wow. And yeah, so then you had a, a two-year rally from 2016 to 2018. Yeah. Then a sell signal, you know, about a year and a half. Then you got a buy signal. Uh, 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 gave you a sell signal in 2021. And so over, since two, January 2021, the last time you closed down below the Bollinger Band, my signals are closes below the Bollinger Band. Yes. And that's your sell signal. So right now... Uh, you really had a hard time making money in, in gold stocks because, in general, they just weren't performing. Right. And that may change here over the next couple of weeks or next month because this is a monthly chart. Okay. If that ratio uh, gets above the mid Bollinger Band. That's you know the bottom window, yeah. and the second window up. You know you've been chopping around uh, on the uh, right. You know, kind of chop down, and it, but it's kind of building some strength here, going sideways. You've noticed the Bollinger Bands. We're starting to pinch in a little bit on yeah. both of them. I just not, put not another lot, chart up so they can see in. it. Yeah, so, so you get a kind of a narrow trading range here. But these are momentum charts. Once they get above the mid Bollinger Band, they usually stay above mid Bollinger Band, you know, at least a year, if not two or three years. So we'll take that, really baby. Favorable. We'll take that. Listen, Tim, thank you so much for the education. You have a great one, safe one, and we look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right, thank you. Okay, have a great one, folks. Have a safe one. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m. Great show, folks.